First, I thought I'd ask a question of all of you. Um, and the question is, what is the goal of design? What are we trying to do? When we talk about doing a good design, what does that mean? What we have to have, we have to sort of agree on what we're trying to accomplish with the design in order to have some criteria on which to judge that, right? Um, good. Well, uh, other things that is to lead you around the pain. Right. Uh, lead, lead you into it or around it, yes. and uh, so that you look at different things, and they're sort of uh, the design can help achieve some of that. Yeah. Uh, so using using the whole campus is how I would put that. Yeah. Right. Whole campus. Uh, what Bonnie talked about was um, a school of thought and design called Unity, which is um, having some balance and harmony to the whole piece, um, balancing off maybe something large here with something small there, or you know, two even pieces, but having some sort of feeling of balance and unity in the piece. So those are good. Anything else? So um, normally that's what we're trying to do, is link those things together. Now, we do the same thing with, with color, right? If we want to create a piece that is um, about harmony, we're not going to pick complementary colors and set them in high intensities right next to each other. Uh, that's going to affect the emotional content of the piece as well. So. Um, most of us have talked about color pretty extensively, but not the emotional side of it, maybe. And maybe we'll deal with some of that here, too, because color is one of the elements of design. Um, Can I you slow down in between your thoughts a little bit? Yes. <laughs> so that you yeah. can get it's, in and write it down. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Thanks. You, you talked about the abstract painting speaking to the emotional state of the viewer. Yeah. But doesn't it also speak to the emotional state uh, hopefully we don't have a difference in those things, um, because I think in, in effective paintings, the viewer um, steps into the, uh, the state of the artist who's creating the work, right? The viewer is allowed to experience the world through the artist's eyes. And uh, that's, that's one of the things that makes art so special. We can time travel this way. We can go and, what did, what did the world look like to Van Gogh? It's not what he's, you know, really putting on us. Right. We walk in and we see what he was seeing, mm -hmm. okay? Um, the emotional resonance of that work comes from the design, the color, the brush, all those kind of things. All the elements, all the elements of design, shape, everything coming together in a way that communicates to us what the emotional state of the artist was, right? Um, now, that's a, that's a very pure kind of uh, painting, where it's um, maybe even coming without much thought towards it. But if we want to organize our thoughts and really contrive a piece to have, you know, to reach a more emotional direction, we can start thinking about the elements of design coming together in such a way to uh, echo the, the thought of that painting. So we can push it a little bit more one way or another. We can make this one a little bit more lonely. We can make it a little more energetic. We can make it a little, you know, I don't know what the categories we might come up with would be, but. Hello, good morning. Hey, um, so, but that's something that maybe we'll talk about too. You know, what kind of things can you do with abstract? There's only so far we can, we can push that. Um, we can certainly, uh, you know, um, have, have some general kind of categorical feelings that we can get. Um, stillness versus motion, uh, you know, the separation versus together, those kind of things we can do. There, there are limits to it, though. Maybe we'll, we'll try and think about what uh, what those categories are. Um, so we have the, we have the, uh, the, the goals of design is what we're covering. Um, first goal of design, creating a mood by using the abstract elements in the painting to convey emotion. The, uh, the second thing is, um, like what Bonnie was kind of talking about, or what George actually was talking about, is the visual, making uh, every part of the canvas important, creating a path so we don't just look at one part and all this stuff is wasted space over here, okay? We want to have everything being some interest, and you could have a big space but it should be important to the piece, right? Even in Japanese design, there's a lot of space being used, but this space is being used as a shape, right? So um, 
So making that space important, keeping the whole campus alive. And, uh, and often that means creating a way for the eye to move through the campus. And I think that's, um, you know, for me, some of the most compelling design is when the eye is traveling. It's not about, um, it's not about a coming together of an edge and a focal point, but it's more about an experience of taking in a whole painting and wandering through it. I find those to be more satisfying designs over the long term. They, they can also be a little bit lower impact, though, so it depends on what you're going for. Okay, so we have to know what we're trying to convey in the piece. Um, everything we do is going to come from knowing what we're setting out to accomplish. Okay? Are you trying to sell something and you have five seconds with someone on a billboard? Or are you trying to create a piece that's going to grow with someone over the next 70 years? We're going to approach those two designs differently. Okay. Um, do you actually decide that before you start a piece? Uh, I, I decided that before I started a career. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yes, you, you decide that before you start a piece. Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, I've, I've had a it's little bit of work happen. that I did in a more commercial world um, when I was an illustrator. And I was certainly trained for all this kind of stuff. And if you need to grab someone's attention, right, and uh, you only have a second to do it, but you don't need to hold it that long in advertising. You need to hold it long enough and made you look, here's the message, you're moving on. Um, that's very different than uh, what I'm trying to do in a, um, a white on white fog and white water ocean piece that I'm hoping people will live with for 30 years and keep finding new things and new ways to enjoy it. Very different way to go about it. So how much contrast are you using? Well, which one seems like the obvious place to put contrast. If you need to grab someone's attention, bright colors, high contrast, all coming together in the middle of a piece, a focal point kind of thing. Um, and there are, there are art collectors who walk in, generally new art collectors, who walk into a gallery and look around and go, that's the painting that hits me. I'm going to get that one. The thing, and there are a lot of artists who make their money off of selling to those people. Um, the thing is, when you have that piece, you've already gotten the whole message of it in the first glance that you saw. Right? So it tends to not be a piece that you can continue to um, grow with and enjoy and uh, you know, find new things. A piece that shows up all at once and is great for um, you know, getting, getting that kind of collector in is a piece also that will probably be resold back to the gallery or end up in a garage sale or handed down to someone or given as a gift because the person who bought it after about six years says, you know, I, I knew everything in the first one minute about that painting. Um, on the other hand, a piece that um, has a much more meandering kind of composition and a use of space that takes you through and has you find different relationships all the way through, um, a painting like that can grow with you for many years. So those are the pieces that I'm interested in doing. And we'll, we'll talk about the differences in this kind of design. But um, I think it's more sophisticated design to do that. Sometimes it's more subtle, uh, although that can, be, that can also be kind of cool, too. Um, so that will give us something to investigate there. But so the visual is making the whole campus important. Okay. I'm, these are, this is my nomenclature, by the way. So. Um, uh, if we're in the, keeping in the tradition of not being academic. <laughs> but this is then kind of going academic, but um, my own style. Um, and that's all that matters. <laughs> that's, that's all I can give you. Uh, that's why we're here. And then the third point um, is aesthetic. Have we made it beautiful? And that's important too. Right? And, and all three of those things are separate thoughts. Have we made the canvas beautiful? Are the shapes elegant? Right? So that speaks to how beautiful something is. Are the shapes elegant? Are the patterns beautiful? Um, is the quality of line beautiful? Is the, uh, is the surface of it beautiful? Is the uh, arrangement of it all pleasing? How aesthetic is it? Now, you could have something that is a path that moves through the canvas, but it's not a beautiful path. Or you could have one that's a really beautiful shape that takes you through. Right? 
So those are different things. Um, you could have something beautiful that doesn't really convey that much emotion. Or you could have something very emotional that doesn't really, that isn't that aesthetic and that doesn't have that much beauty. So these are different elements uh, of how I would judge design. Okay, and the strongest design is going to have all three of those qualities. It's going to use the canvas effectively. It's going to make everything important. It's going to have some sense of unity and balance. Okay, that's um, just the, the visual, utilitarian visual side of design. Okay, we have the emotional content and then we have the aesthetics. You all good here? Mm -hmm.